right, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Emma Mulvaney Stanek, and I am a, a former city councilor from the Old North End and also former state chair of the Vermont Progressive Party. We are really excited to see uh, the great participation tonight already and really excited about the caucus we're about to embark on. So thank you for making time to be here. Um, it's great to see new faces and familiar faces, and we, really, we have an open caucus, so we're really excited to see everyone here tonight. And raise your hand if you're a first-time caucus goer for the progressives. Awesome, welcome, very exciting. A little more enthusiasm, I know it's like seven o'clock, but yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Um, so we have a, a tight agenda tonight. We're gonna try to run it on time, but some of our caucuses are contested and we have time in the agenda to really allow folks from those wards to really talk to candidates, get to know I'm cut, oh, here I am, okay. And to, uh, to really make sure that you ha feel fully informed about who you want to give the progressive um, uh, nomination to, or the endorsement, I should say. So a little housekeeping. Uh, so we're in the cafeteria. Edmonds School has two parts to it. So when we wake up, uh, break up for the caucus, there's the middle school, which is the building up to the left, and there's the elementary up to the right, if you're my direction, if you turned around, okay? So your, your right and your left these two directions. So there will be some caucuses, I'll go over where, that are going to use a couple classrooms up in the middle school, and I'll explain how to get there in a minute, and the other half of the wards will stay in this room. Uh, there's, I believe, still snacks and food and whatnot. Is this breaking out? I'll stay right this way. Okay, can you hear me still? Okay. Um, and there's bathrooms, I'm pretty sure, out in the hallway, so please take care of yourself. Um, and is there any more housekeeping, Josh, in terms of... Everyone should have received a ballot on the way in, and if anyone has any eligibility questions around your your caucus status, uh, and w if you're able to vote, you can go see some of our check-in people um, before we go into the caucuses, or into the ward caucuses. All right, so with that, I have two other quick things before passing the mic over to uh, Brian Sheena, Representative Brian Sheena, and the first is, who knows what the Inspector of Elections does? Pop quiz, just raise your hand. One person, awesome, all right, a little quick tutorial. We're gonna be talking about three uh, elected positions tonight in our ward caucuses, that's city council, school commissioner, and the inspector of elections, which is vital to our local democracy. You basically work side by side um, with the ward clerks on election days and help to make sure democracy happens, that, it's fair, that the elections happen fairly, um, that the voters get to register to vote um, since we have same day registration, uh, and really just help the elections process happen. It's a pretty small gig. It's a great entry point if you ever wanted to dabble in getting elected. There are always at least one seat open in every election cycle for town meeting, and in some wards, there's more than one because there's a couple of vacancies out there. There's, I believe, three inspectors of elections in every ward. So think about it. It's a super low bar, great way to get engaged um, and get your foot in the door. And if you have more questions, you can see Josh Ronsky from the party. Where did he go? He's somewhere. Or myself, um, if you have questions before you go to your caucus. The other uh, quick housekeeping or, or other piece, if we do need a parliamentarian, I'm also gonna serve in that function. So if there is a procedural question in your ward caucus or even in the um, meeting, the larger meeting tonight, um, I'll be um, answering those rules and procedures. Sound good? You with me? I have a three month old and I am more awake than all of you. So let's just like bring the energy up a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so next up, let's hear from Brian. Brian, where are you? Friend Brian. Friend Brian is not here, so Gil Livingston. <laughs> Playing the role of Brian today will be Gil Livingston. It's great to see such a big crowd. So I'm talking about money. I'm going to do it briefly, but this is really important. We, we have had great success, especially in the greater Burlington area, but statewide in terms of uh, supporting progressive candidates and pro progressive issues. Um, and it, it happens relentlessly. It's, it's hard just to call out this week, but my friend Jack, working with the progressive members of the council uh, this week, uh, got uh, approval, preliminary approval, for um, instant runoff election principles <laughs> on the ballot in April. And so that requires a lot of work, right? You've seen a lot of volunteers here tonight, so it's... It's, it's not just a, a staffing piece, um, but Josh Ronsky does an incredible job for us. Uh, I don't know how he does everything he does with such limited time, uh, but um, we need to maintain capacity, including Josh, to achieve all the success we've had, uh, including organizing caucuses, supporting candidates, um, 
uh, partnering with allied organizations around key policy issues. Um, so we really encourage you uh, to make contributions. Um, my wife, Amy, is here. She actually started this in our household. Um, we, we've had a, um, a regular monthly contribution to the Progressive Party for years, and it slowly ratcheted up. So especially if you can do a, a regular uh, uh, direct payment or credit card payment to the party, that would be tremendously helpful. Uh, so thank you all for coming, and uh, write a check, make a contribution. Thank you. Thanks, Gil. I'm also a happy sustainer, month, a monthly donor to the party, and I really encourage folks to consider that. No donation is too small. And you all have donation envelopes in your hand. You should have received one. It's an um, invitation to join literally the party, small p, right? That was a joke. Thank you for laughing. Okay. Thank you. Wow, you really all need to bring the energy up. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this will bring the energy up. Let's talk about caucus rules. So let's bring Earhart up to talk you through how the caucuses will function. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> for, for those who are uh, energy challenged, there is some sugar and, uh, for the, from the dessert potluck uh, in the back, so uh, sugar up. Um, again, my name is uh, Erhard Monka. I live in Ward 1 on Grove Street. I've uh, been involved with the Progressive Party since before there was a Progressive Party and uh, former city councilor during, uh, during the Bernie era. So uh, everybody should have received a, a little sheet as they registered on came in. Uh, and has in bold at the top, caucus rules. I want to just go over them briefly to make sure uh, I'm, there's not going to be a quiz, but uh, I'm assuming that people have not yet read all this. So let me uh, briefly go over it. A uh, couple of eligibility requirements. Uh, so, and this is based on our bylaws and uh, state law. Number one, you have to be an eligible Burlington voter. Um, if you are not currently registered to vote, you can still register uh, out in the, in the hallway. Um, you have to support the Progressive Party platform and the Statement of Principles. I will spare you the reading of the Statement of Principles. There is one copy over in uh, one of the alcoves in the back in case you want to um, want to check it out. Um, it's also on the uh, party website. Um, you have to consider yourself to be a member of the Vermont Progressive Party. Um, you cannot s currently be serving on either the Democratic or uh, the Republican Party committee. And you can't vote in either the Democratic or Republican Party endorsement caucus. So that one's really important. Uh, if you were planning to go to either Democratic or Republican caucuses uh, as they come up, I think the Democrats are having theirs in early January, you can't vote in both. Um, so decision time. If you're here and you want to vote here, um, that's, that's great. That's fine. We welcome uh, every, everyone who considers themselves a member of the Progressive, progressive Party. Uh, but know that you can't also then go to a Democratic caucus and uh, vote there. Um, rules for endorsement. Um, so uh, our bylaws uh, have some guidelines uh, that urge you to consider the following factors uh, when you're endorse, voting to endorse a candidate. Number one, uh, their affirmative endorsement of the Vermont Progressive Party Statement of Principles. Uh, their commitment not to work in opposition to any provision in the platform. Uh, the candidate's commitment uh, not to work against the Progressive Party endorsed candidates and a commitment to caucus regularly with other progressive elected officials. Um, any questions on either uh, the eligibility requirements or uh, things you should be thinking about uh, as you're deciding who to, uh, who to endorse? Great. Uh, so then the ward caucus rules um, are... Uh, Probably the caucus leaders will go over this in each individual caucus, uh, just to make sure everybody's on the same wavelength. Um, but to ensure a fair process, uh, we want to adhere to the following guidelines. Uh, number one, uh, let's do city, in, uh, city council endorsements first uh, before we get into school commissioners uh, or inspectors of election ward clerks. Um, each candidate um, may be nominated by one caucus goer. There could be one endorsement speech of no more than one or two minutes um, for each, uh, each candidate. Um, and then each candidate is going to have three to five minutes to uh, make their case uh, for why they want the progressive endorsement. Uh, caucus goers will have up to 20 minutes uh, for uh, Q&A. Um, we ask that all questions, uh, A, be brief, B, be respectful, and C, be directed to each candidate, so not you know targeting one candidate with one question and another with another, um, and please 
keep statements uh, to a minimum, make them real questions. Um, then um, voting's gonna be conducted by secret ballot. Um, and as Emma said, if you haven't already got your ballot, um, please go back outside and register and, and get your ballot. Um, they're issued by, by ward. Um, secret ballot, there's gonna be a write-in option, there's a no endorsement option, um, and uh, after uh, the caucus is, has concluded, um, we'll uh, have ballot counters collect those, and uh, you can come back here um, for the keynote, uh, the keynote speech, which is gonna be Mohammed Jafar talking about an exciting uh, voter initiative that um, he has been a great leader on uh, to get uh, more new Americans uh, to uh, participate in the, in the local process. Any questions? Josh, uh, I didn't make up the ballots. Um, Josh, did anyone hear the question? This Jim Rader, former city, former city clerk, is asking uh, why there is no um, designation for ward clerk on the. Thank you. They're not. They're not up this year. Other questions? Anyone else? Did I meet my time limit? All right. Hold up. Ali. I want to make an explanation as to where. Could you say who you are, Ali? <laughs> because you said Ali. <laughs> Ward 7 City Councilor. Thank you. All right. So the endorsement for school commissioners, where did it come from? I mean, it seems new to me this year. Uh, I just want an explanation where it comes from. Sure, I'll, I'll try to feel that. So for folks who may not know, a number of years ago, um, school commissioners no longer ran by party affiliation. Um, they used to run by party affiliation. That was done away with a number of years ago. I actually didn't like that idea, but it happened. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't get an endorsement. Um, what we have here is an endorsement process. It's not a formal nominating process. So uh, you could still run. You. As a school commissioner, you would be on the ballot without a party affiliation on the ballot, but in your literature, you could say, for example, that you're endorsed by the Progressive Party or the Democratic or the Republican Party, but it would not have a DP uh, or R next to your name uh, on the ballot because they're nonpartisan elections. Other questions? Seeing none, I'll... Emma. Thank you, Earhart. Yeah, I'll do that next. Yeah, thanks. Okay. How about a round of applause for Earhart? Let's. <laughs> we'll get the blood moving a little bit more. Okay. All right. So we need sugar. We need caffeine. Okay. So. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me now? In the back of the room. Good. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through the, uh, where the different caucuses are going to meet, and I'm going to introduce you to your caucus leaders. So I'll do the leaders first. So if you're a leader and I mention your name, could you stand up and give a wave so people can make eye contact if that's their ward? Uh, so Ward 1, Mark Hughes. Hi, Mark. All right. Ward 2, Annie Schneider. Where are you, Annie? She's over here on this side. You can see through the half wall. Ward 3 is Bar Prine up there in the back. Back dead center there. Uh, ward four, I believe, is going to be Josh for now. No, who, who's ward four now? Keenan? Ward four and seven are doing it. They're going to do it together. All right. So Keenan's come, come in for a big challenge. So Keenan is going to do ward four and seven. So he's right down. Sorry. Is that true? Is that true? What? True statement. You said true? True. All right. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Uh, ward five is Mohammed Jafar. Mohammed, you are back there, back corner. Thank you. Ward six is Kelly Pierpont. Kelly, 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 where are you, my friend? Right here in the middle of the room. Uh, ward 7, we mentioned, is Keenan again, and Ward 8 is Joe. Hi, Joe. Back there in the middle of the side. Okay. All right. So this is where you're headed. So again, if you're confused about what ward you reside in, you can see one of us to help you. Otherwise, listen for your ward. Ward 1 um, is probably going to be a larger gathering, so we're going to send you upstairs so there's going to be a few wards that go upstairs. They're all next to each other. There are classrooms in the middle school. So you're going to go um, back out the, these double doors, up the stairs, over the bridge, through the woods, 
and to the first three classrooms that you come to. There'll be two on the right, I believe, and one on the left. The lights will be on, okay? And it's first come, first serve. Excuse me? What do you mean by going over the bridge? And through the woods? <laughs> Uh, so there is, a, there is a bridge connecting this part of the building with the uh, middle school building, so it's a hallway. It's a hallway with some pretty windows that look into the darkness. Does that answer your question? All right. Uh, and you know what? Once you find your caucus leader, they will bravely lead you over the bridge through the woods into your classroom. Okay. You can follow them. So ward, ward one is going to be one of those wards using that classroom. So you will go in and over the bridge and up to the, uh, one of the first classrooms you come to. Ward three is going to be in this room over in this side of the, of the room. Okay, so ward three stays here over on this side of this big room. Uh, wards four and seven are also going up over the bridge. They'll be meeting in the same room and meeting together apparently anyway. So you're going to share a classroom. Good? All right. Ward 2 will stay in this room as well, the other part of the Old North End. They'll be on this side of the room. Um, so Ward 2 stays in this room, this side. Ward 5 and 6 will also go upstairs, and they will also split the final classroom upstairs and be run on two sides of the room. We, we imagine these are smaller gatherings, so you should be able to, hold on one second, Barb, share that classroom. And finally, Ward 8 is also going to stay in this room, and we're going to put you in the back corner this way, so 3 and 8 are going to sort of split this side of the room. Okay, questions? Barb, I saw a hand. Are you going to 4 2 or 4 1? What is it? So, what, you're going one flight up. Follow, you're going to follow your ward leaders. I'm going to repeat those people's names in a minute. And you can. Oh, thank you. Okay, so it's one floor up. Does that help? Okay, one floor up. Thank you for the clarification. Sorry, two floors up. I apologize. If you're riding the elevator, it's two floors up. Okay, and Barb, I see your hand. One thing that will help people is if you raise your ballots, because the ballots are color-coded, you'll be able to tell if you're in the right group, right? So if, not, if you're in Ward 3, it's a red ballot. You're going to hang out with all the red people. And in the other ballots, yeah, I'm also going to excuse you. I'm going to excuse everyone kind of like they do in school anyway to see if we can be organized this. So Ward 1, hold on, hold on where you are. Ward 1, if you are in Ward 1, please stand up. If you're not in Ward 1, please sit down. So Ward 1, please follow Mark Hughes out the door and up the stairs. And then everyone else, hold on one moment. Ladies and gentlemen, clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. 
Clap three times if you can hear me. All right, so I welcome you to find a seat. Welcome back. Does everyone have a good caucus in their wards? Yeah, yeah, democracy, yay, okay. All right, hold your enthusiasm, crowd, okay. All right, so before- Thank you, Barb. I am like literally talking into this thing. Okay, so welcome back. Thank you for participating in your awards. We're going to um, hear from our keynote speaker and then we'll announce the results. We still have some ballots we're going through from the caucuses. Uh, so without, for, actually before we do that, Mohammed, before we do that, I, um, we have another guest speaker, Brian, where'd you go? Yeah, Brian's gonna come up and say one more inspired thing around the importance of fundraising for the party. So Bri Representative Brian Sheena. Whoa, okay, so I, I'm gonna quickly just just um, say that, say that it, it's important that uh, we as individuals chip in whatever we can, a little bit we can um, towards the Progressive Party because the Progressive Party does not accept any contributions from any corporations and it, it and, 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 and in our capitalist society that makes a difference because corporations give lots of money to, uh, to the other political parties and so um, it's important that each per person, you know, chip in if you can. Um, it really helps to have a staff person working for the Progressive Party as a legislator, to have Josh Ronsky, who deserves some clapping for the work he does. Because he goes, he goes above and beyond for what we pay him. Um, he works, he does like two people's jobs for the price of one. Um, and it would be nice if over time we could have a few more staff people to help us on the state level and to help on the, on the city level. Um, and so I donate $10 a month. That's how much I think I can afford. And, and, um, and it, it comes out of a credit card every month and then I pay it, you know, when I pay my credit card bill. And every year I get 12 cents back from the credit card because they give like po reward points. Um, so over the course of like 100 years, I might make like $12. Um, back, so there might be a better way to pay it. But, but that being said, uh, I want to. I I, was, I just wanted to share my story as a contributor and share with people um, where the money goes. It actually goes to the salary of a staff person, a working class person who works with us and really hard to do the work of the party on a grassroots level without any help of any um, corporations. It's all people powered. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna invite up uh, Mohammed Jafar, who's going to discuss the, his work with the New American Voting Project. So come on up, Mohammed. Thank you. All right, hello, hello. Uh, first and foremost, thank you all for being out here tonight. Can I just get a round of applause for all of you? All right, um, some of you may know me, some of you may not. I ran for city council last year. Uh, I lost. <laughs> um, but I want to share with you all a project um, that I started back in November of last year um, and a project that is now coming together um, in its many pieces and I think it's going to be a project that's gonna be very, very valuable to the city of Burlington and to the democracy that is our system. Um, so the project, New, Vote, New American Voter Registration Project. Um, so essentially, last year in November during the presidential election, you know, everyone was very excited to come out and vote. Uh, there were several New Americans that came out. It was their first time coming out to vote and one of the biggest concerns that was highlighted to me, I, I serve on the board for the registration of voters, so I was on the side uh, during the polling time, uh, during the polling and election day, and someone, not someone, several people came up to me and they were just concerned that they didn't really know what to do. They said they had the conviction in them to vote. Donald Trump brings people out, whether we like it or not. Um, and people came out to vote, but a lot of people felt like they didn't have the direction that they needed to feel comfortable and to feel as though they had the access necessary to really feel enriched in their voting and, and in the process. Um, so 
I was angry, I crossed my arms, I stomped my feet, and I went all the way up to the Secretary of State's office, and I said, what the heck is going on? Um, to which the reply was, calm down, let's figure out how to do this. Um, and since I have embarked on this project, uh, which has aimed to bring accessibility to a, a part of our community that really does not get the representation and accessibility that it needs and deserves. Um, so we embarked on a three-part project which included videos, translated ballots in six languages, and um, an event which would essentially invite people to the process again and give them information that they need to know how to vote and what the voting process looks like. Um, I bring this project to the table for the Progressive Party because I think this project and the Progressive Party share a heart. Um, I think that the soul, the soul of the Progressive Party is to move forward and to bring people to the table that are not at the table. And in order to bring people to the table, sometimes we have to take the extra leap to pull them in. And I think that this project is something that will pull even more people in. So we embarked on a pilot project would, which is going to be started in Burlington and in Winooski and will hopefully expand. Um, so as I said, we have six of the languages translated. We have videos that we recorded um, in the six various languages and actors from all over Burlington. These videos will be, uh, can be viewed on the Secretary of State's website um, and they will also be viewed during our event which we can get more information about at another time. Um, and so the six languages were translated so folks can come in, they can see and ask for whichever language that they speak, and I wish we could have more languages, but this again is a pilot, and if it does work, we'll be able to implement it on a yearly basis. And I'm very, very thankful to the Secretary of State's office for taking this project on. Um, there is a certain cap in terms of the amount of folks that are United States citizens and can um, vote that is needed in order for voter technology and access to languages. Uh, to be triggered, if you will, and the Secretary of State's office still took this project on with me, even with my stomping and arms crossed, and it's, it's really going to be a project. It's, if you can't tell, it's a project I'm very, very proud of, um, and the best part is it's not, it's not even my project. It's a, it's a project that belongs to several people that are here right now that worked with me after the first meeting with the Secretary's office didn't, didn't go so well. I, brought in some brains, I brought some people who are involved in the community, who are part of the Progressive Party. I brought those folks in and we all put our minds together and we came up with a system, a structure, and a project that really is going to work. And again, if you can't tell already, I'm super duper excited. Um, if there's anything I'm missing, I'm just going to go ahead and give a quick, soft shout out to the folks that are in this room that have already worked on the project with me, which is Annie in the corner over there, Adin over there, Barb and Ali, and several other people whom I'm probably missing. But again, I bring this project to the table to all of you because I really do feel that the Progressive Party embodies what my values are. And Khalid, oh my god, I apologize. One of our actors, in fact, I apologize. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, Khalid. So uh, again, it embodies what this Progressive Party is, and that's why I'm bringing it all to you. And I hope that you will share this information with your neighbors and with, with the community. And uh, again, I'm, I'm very excited, and hopefully this will be something that will be implemented across the state at some point. What are the six languages? Barb, please help me when I get stuck. Uh, they are Swahili, Arabic, Ma Somali, French, uh, Nepali, and Burmese. See, that's, that's why they're on board with the project. That's what they do. So again, a round of applause for everyone that's worked on the project, but also all of you again. Thank you all for being here tonight, and thank you for having me. Are there actually any questions besides that for, for Mohammed? Any questions about the project? I have just a kind of nerdy structural question. Ask away. Is this a project of the Secretary of State? Are there any paid staff? Like, how are you organized? Um, so again, I went over there. I was kind of angry. and uh, So just to repeat the question, is this a project of the Secretary of State's office? Um, yes and no. I think it's a project of the community. But he is funding it, and he did, you know, he... 
Yeah, yeah, he's doing quite a lot. So it's certainly a project of both the Secretary of State's office and the larger community. Um, again, it's, it's, there is a certain threshold that needs to be met in order for something like that to be triggered. And as soon as I went there, the Secretary of State's office was very understanding and, and, and re receptive to, to the message that I was sending, which was, hey, we, want, we say we want to be progressive. We say we want democracy. We say we want to bring people to the table. This is an opportunity to do it. And, uh, you know, and so here we are with a project, and it's going to be amazing. I see a, a question from Ali. Okay. Uh, are there plans for new Americans to find out about it if it's not website? Yes. Uh, so there is an event. There are going to be actually two events. Thank you, Ali. That's a great question. There are going to be two events, one in Winooski and one in Burlington. Um, and we'll get more information out there once we ha kind of have our details um, rooted. Uh, but we have two events in which we are going to invite the secretary. Um, and we're going to invite community members. We're going to have food. And we are going to um, give people the information that they need and give, let people know about the project, but also help people get registered to vote so that we have a bigger body of progressives. So we unfortunately do have a very limited amount of resources and so these were the languages that were at the top of the list in terms of um, meeting both the, the number of United States citizens but also folks that are able to, uh, able to and are going to vote. Um, so I wish we had Spanish and again th this is going to be, it's a first step. Uh, right now we have nothing and as I always like to put it, this is going to be better than nothing and next year we'll hopefully expand on that and we'll get Spanish in there. That is my goal is that this isn't just a one-time thing nor is it a five language thing. Any other questions? Awesome, thank you all again. Okay, so a little bit of news from Montpelier. Um, in case folks are not familiar, our uh, House progressives, the folks elected to state representative in the House, um, have a caucus themselves. And I wanted to announce that Selena Colburn, who is a representative from the east side of the city, District 6 1, is the oh. new. Chitin and 6 4, sorry. Whatever, yeah, somewhere over that way. <coughs> she is the new assistant leader of the Progressive House Caucus, so we wanted to congratulate her, first of all. She's right there in the back. And also to thank, Deanna, yeah, to thank Representative Deanna Gonzalez, who's a representative um, from the Winooski and slight bit of Burlington District, which is, again, you don't worry about the numbers, but she's uh, served in that role in the past, and we really have appreciated her leadership. There's strong women in this caucus, and we really appreciate both of you stepping up and serving. So congratulations, Selena, and thank you, Deanna, for your, for your work. Okay, are we ready for the results of the caucus? Okay, here we go. Can everyone hear me? Oh, hold on. <laughs> All of them? At the end. Okay, at the end. Okay. So at the end, if you are, um, if you did receive the uh, endorsement, we're going to ask all the candidates to come up to the front of the room at the end, and we'll take a photo of those folks. Okay. So if you are an endorsed candidate, just remember that, please. I'm going to go in reverse order. Okay. So Ward Eight, <laughs> Ward Eight, which is in the central part of the city, uh, for City Council, the Ward um, endorsed Jane Stromberg. For City Council, can you stand up? You can say yes. Just if you're, if this is you, just stand up so people can see you and you can be recognized. At the end, you can all come up, okay? So that was for uh, City Council and for School Commissioner Aden um, Haji was nominated for the Progressive Endorsement. And there was no Inspector of Elections, uh, at least endorsed in this caucus. Ward 7, out in the New North End. So our incumbent, Ali Deng, was, received the endorsement for the Progressive City Council. And for school commissioner, the incumbent, Monica Ivancic. Did I say that correctly? Ivancic? <laughs> hey, Monica, congratulations. And then moving over to Ward 6. Um, the wards are not logically ordered here. Anyway, Ward 6, we're going in... Oh, sorry. Did, was there inspector elections? I didn't capture that. Tell us your name. I'm Jake 
Jake. Thank you, Jake. As I said, it's the gateway position into elected <laughs> office. All right. Ward 6, uh, back over to um, the Hill section of the city. There was no city council candidate endorsed. Uh, there, I believe there's no candidate, so there wasn't. There was no one endorsed. And then for school commissioner Claire Wool received a progressive endorsement. Claire, I saw you earlier. Not, not here. Uh -huh. uh, Ward five um, to the south end. The city council position uh, endorsement went to Nathan uh, Lantier. Is that correct? Uh, was Mike Fisher who received the endorsement? The school commissioner. All right, counting down. Ward four, back to the New North End. Uh, the city council endorsement went to Sarah Carpenter. Sarah. And I believe there was no uh, school commissioner endorsement in that particular caucus. Ward three. Uh, just kidding, back to Ward 8 first. There are two inspectors of election there. Cora Smith received the endorsement. Hi, Cora. And also Lola Jacuzzi. I love when women run for office. Total bias, but I love when women run for office. So well done. Okay, so Ward 3. Uh, Brian Pine received the endorsement. He's an incumbent from Ward 3. Inspector of Elections, Barbie also won the Inspector of Elections endorsement. Barbie's over here. There was no school commissioner endorsement in that caucus. Ward 2, Max Tracy won the city council endorsement for Ward 2. Steve Carey won the school commissioner endorsement. Steve Carey is here still. Uh, and then the Inspector of Elections was um, Khalid Al-Mubarak. Congratulations, Khalid. And then moving to Ward 1. Um, and for the City Council endorsement, it went to Zariah Haidt. Hi in Ward 1. I think I covered it all. Yay! Yay, okay. Photo. So congratulations to all the endorsed candidates. Thank you for everyone who ran and uh, put themselves forward. We had a few contested races. And with that, we invite all the endorsed candidates to come to the front. And thank you all. Have a great night.